Well, sportsmen, I have to say good morning. <laughs> Here we are at uh, 7.30 on opening day of the 1997 Michigan firearm deer season. We are obviously in the woods. Uh, we've already seen four deer come across this clearing. Of course, it was the, the light was pretty low, so we don't know what we have on tape, but we're going to get back to that in a minute. We're going to give you a report on where we are. I'll give you a hint. Instead of hunting on somebody else's land, this year we're hunting on my property. Quite a bit of it I have. Maybe you don't know about that. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. You're watching Opening Day on The Practical Sportsman. I mentioned that this year we're hunting on my property. This tract of land, as far as you can see all around here, these hills, mine, yours too. <laughs> this is public land. This is state land up here in northern Michigan. I might as well tell you close to where we are. We're hunting in Wexford County. That's in the area around Cadillac. You'll probably be able to pinpoint it a little closer as we show you our camp. We have a tent camp up here. At daylight, well, about 7 o'clock, we started hearing shots. You can, they're going off all around us. You probably can't pick it up on the microphone there, but... Uh, we're hunting a little spot here that it, there's a clearing in front of us. And that clearing goes down to those, those heavy pines and cedars down there. And it cuts off to the left. So what you see behind us, this little strip of woods here, is you know, sort of a, a peninsula. And already we've had two sets of two deer come across very early. The first set, I don't even know if we got on camera. John wasn't quite sure. They're just like apparitions moving across, but they look like a couple of small ones. The next pair that came across, one of them looked like a buck. I'm, I should say, acted like a buck. Yep. And uh, I don't know, we, <laughs> we tried to wish some antlers on them, but maybe it's on the tape. But if it was, it would be a small buck, just a spike. But they came across. Now, that was pretty exciting for being here on our property on state land. The reputation that state land has, you know, for having so many hunters and being so crowded. Yeah, there, there are a lot of hunters here, but we're spaced out. And I expect the deer will be moving throughout the day. That's the exciting thing about state land. But this little peninsula. Well, we didn't open the season with a bang, but as the woods got lighter, we continued to see deer moving. Now, I didn't apply for a doe license in this area, so I could only take a buck. Yeah. It's a doe, isn't it? Yeah. On opening morning, all the deer we saw came from our left, from the west, and they were moving east across the little clearing in front of us. Snow fell on and off during the day, but hey, it made a beautiful setting on November 15th. The temperature was below freezing, and the wind was light. Ideal deer hunting conditions. Yeah, it's a small deer. You know, this is darn exciting. That's the fifth deer we've seen in this coming across this clearing. During the day, the deer traffic slowed down, and we only saw three other hunters we didn't know, all of them from a distance. Public land has always had the reputation of being crowded with hunters, but we sure didn't see that that happened this year, at least in this area. In fact, we saw a lot more deer than we saw hunters. I had hoped, actually, that there would be more hunters in this area because hunters moving around cause the deer to move around. But the deer we saw from this blind were all moving naturally. We're, we're set up here in a, a natural blind, and this is what you need to have on state land. Of course, you can, you can have a portable blind that you put up, take down every day, but this is one that you can leave in place. It's made out of natural materials. Now, you see, we're in between a couple of trees, a little clump of trees here. And this is very useful in a blind like this because it can tie together your cross pieces. See, these are just uh, downed trees that have been picked up from around here that John and Matt just built it like a little fort. And you can use these to rest the gun on. Actually, they need to be a little higher for that. But uh, these trees you can also use to put the gun up against. Now, this is what you call the practical scope cover. 
keep the snow out of the, <laughs> the scope. I have scope covers that are somewhere. But anyway, that's a <clears throat> practical scope cover. I'm sitting in here on a on a bucket, of course, with a, <clears throat> the swivel seat. And here's a new new thing that that we've got this year. This is a four pound tank, LP gas tank. And this is uh, just some piping that you can get to put a mister heater on. And this is what we're gonna use to keep our feet and our hands warm here in the blind. We got the plans for this, by the way, in the Outdoor Digest magazine. It costs, it's kind of pricey for these components. I don't know, 65 bucks. But there's a couple days worth of gas right here. Easy enough to carry around and can use it ice fishing. So this is the setup. Of course, the, we have to have a blind that's a little bigger <clears throat> than the average person would need for you, John, the cameraman, yep. with the tripod in here. Well, we haven't seen any deer for the past half hour, but I'm time. Back in. Okay, yeah, climb back in here. We'll get this heater fired up. Hey, I don't care what anybody says. A heater is the key to staying in the woods from dawn till dark. Keeping your hands warm channels your blood circulation to other parts of your body, like your toes, and you'll feel warm all over. That means you'll be more alert so you can spot deer, and you can stay alert when the deer aren't so active. And they were not active in the afternoon on opening day, at least where we were hunting. But as darkness fell, a deer appeared on the east side of the clearing, apparently going back to where the deer were coming from earlier in the morning. I think that's a young one that's eating. Let's see, it's exactly 26 after 5. Uh, it's a small one. Jesus, eating something out there in the, in the grass. It's like it's eating or drinking. I don't know, must be eating something. But uh, this is kind of cool. You know, it's almost 5.30. If it wasn't for this baby right here, never would have made it all day. You see another one? Yeah, but uh, it's warm. I tell you, it's been a cold one. A darn cold one. Well, we got about 15 minutes. Nah, 18 minutes or so. I thought we'd see him just before dark. Well, John Ford and I had seen 10 deer within shooting range on opening day. We saw six early in the morning, but only one at dark. None were legal bucks. The most difficult time to focus a camera is in dim light. John see. compensates with the extender and the low light booster, but none of these adjustments grows legal size antlers on this deer. Yeah, the little spot. How, how, how little? Well, about three inches, looks like to me. I can't be positive, so you're going to have to check, but check uh, fast. Yeah, but I can't. Come on, dude. I had the same conclusion you did, but I can't see either. It's got to be a little spike. It's a spike, but it's got to be. Yes, yeah, appeared to be a little spike buck. <laughs> Whoa, something spooked it. Let's go the other way now. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. Let's try to confirm it. I can't say spikes for sure. Both John and I thought we could detect small spikes, two, maybe three inches long, right between the buck's ears, but we weren't absolutely sure. It acted more like a buck, though, than a doe. I swear that's a spike. If it is, they're small. Yeah, they're small, but... Off it went. My opportunity was gone. I couldn't see enough to be sure. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. I mean, my, and of course, as I get excited, I get up next to the scope and I'm breathing and my scope fogs up. Watching, maybe. But, you know, he was a dist... He must have been 200 yards out there. Yeah. There's no way I could identify for sure because of the ears. I kept thinking it's the outline of the ears. No, it's antler. Well, that was a long ways off. Can you imagine trying to determine whether a buck has 
four one-inch tines on one side of the antler from across the field, <laughs> that'd be pretty tough. Ten minutes later, another deer appears in the same location. I see no spikes. I think it's a doe. I'm sure it's a doe. Is it still in the corner? Yep. But the last trees, the very last trees just popped its head up. Okay. I'll just put them in the corner. John couldn't see antlers through the camera. I couldn't see any through the rifle scope. This one had to be a doe. Then at the same time, two more deer appeared in the woods to our left. Okay, then. They're going to come out. Got to be a doe and a fawn behind her. Without a doubt. I don't see anything on the head. I'm looking at the one behind. One behind smaller. Just looks like ears to me. Yep, little button buck. The morning of the second day was starting with a flurry. We had three deer in front of us, including a little button buck. That big buck could step out any moment. Oh, 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 oh. What do we have here? I can't see, can you? A single deer that follows does can often be a buck, but not in this group. This was a doe that just happened to be following another doe and her fawn. They were all using the same runway. It's got to be 75 yards away. And they're directly downwind from us. Well, even though these deer were downwind, I don't think they smelled us. The little fawn was focused on eating. The does, I think they saw us moving around with the camera and the gun and the blind. They really key in on movements. I can see by my breath that the air is blowing up. We already have the updraft. Okay, that's five deer in, oh, between like 20 after 7 and, and 10 to 8. I got a good chunk of property here. I hate to keep hammering this, but uh, you folks can use it anytime you want. Well, our experience with hunting on public land was a surprise. I expected far more hunters. I expected the deer to be moving because the hunters would be moving. But opening weekend was relatively quiet. Well, that's where we've been sitting. Right down there, you see the, well, you can see the blind from there, crying out loud, all those dead trees laying across there. And this is the spot where that one doe was fiddling around and eating, apparently just eating this little, this green grass and stuff that's in here. That's all we can figure out. There's no scrapes or anything like that in here. So it must be just the green grass. But if you've wondered what's up around the corner from the left, this clearing goes back in a little ways. You can see the aspens around the edge that are, have started to grow back. I don't know how long ago this clear cut was done. There's the big bank along the river there. That's on the other side of the river. And of course, this is quite a large clearing and those, what we think was the buck, ran from this corner over to that corner. And I guess that's some fairly thick stuff with some deer beds in it. And that's where we've been sitting for the past day and a half. A little blind right there. That was our home. And now we're gonna go to our regular homes. Ah, but in between, let's take a look at our home away from home, our deer camp. We put our campsite in probably one of the most picturesque parts of our property here. <laughs> this, is, this is our river as well. This is actually the Manistee River flowing right along the edge of our campsite. Now we have a little swamp, a little finger going out here by the river, but here's our camp. This is our 1997 deer camp. There's our, our main cook tent. There's a sleeping tent. In fact, let's start over here, John. Uh, the outermost 
tent here is Professor Farragan, our hunter emeritus who dug his tent out of the barn, which he hasn't used this in a number of years. But look at this. The man is organized. Huh, Tim? Well, I'm getting out organized right now. <laughs> getting things put away from the hunt. Got the sleeping bag and everything. We'll be packing up here in a few minutes. That's, that's Tim's little retreat. Now here's a retreat that we all use back here with the blue tarp. Uh, let me just say that that's our personal executive deluxe bathroom. <laughs> it's all enclosed, heated in the mornings. Anyway, over here is a tent that, we just got this from, from Coleman, because we're, we're getting set up with more camping now when we go, you know, using our land here. Uh, John, this is a, these tents they're making nowadays, look at that zipper, is that slick or what? Anyway, this is a three room job. There's a room right here we just use for storage right now. And I had a kerosene heater in here. This is my bedroom. I have this tied off, but let's go around to show you. There are actually three doors in this tent on each end and in the middle so that, you know, if you want to get out in the, if you're on one of the end bedrooms and you want to get out in the night, it's no sweat. But here it is, right there. And this is my sleeping bag on a thick air mattress. This has some different pockets in it. It's very comfortable. But that's where I slept last night. Now we'll go into, this is our, this used to be our main tent, you know, and when we all slept in one tent and we, and we cooked in the tent and everything, it's like too close to quarters for a bunch of guys. But it has a wood stove in it. I think we have here the guys cooking. All right. Oh, it looks like we got a skillet full of beans, a pot full of franks, huh, Matty? Yep. Hey, looking good. And what's Sal doing? Flipping, flipping the, bun. flipping the, the buns, buns. flipping Toasting. the buns, toasting him. That's great, here on this wooden stove. Yeah, this tent is a real spacious tent. We found that uh, sleeping here, I mean, we get a lot of junk and, and, and it's hard to sleep and eat and do all this. Uh, you guys, what are you watching? The Foot Locker, football, huh? Football. Isn't that something else? Battery powered radio. Well, Tim, I see you made it over here. You got your stuff all packed up. Most of it. This will be the, the final you. meal for Deer Camp. Richard Archer relaxing and Sal Ghani. Oh, Johnny, I got to show you these chairs. These guys are sitting in chairs that look pretty deluxe. We got uh, brand new Coleman came out with these like director's chairs. Look at that. Oh, man. This is living. You know, with a little more planning, this could really be awesome. <laughs> Well, tent camping takes a bit more planning than trailer camping or staying in a cabin, but tent camping has one big advantage. You can pitch a tent back in the woods where you couldn't haul a big trailer. These remote campsites have privacy and solitude like you can't find anyplace else. You know, this is my land, and it's your land too. It belongs to all of us. From the most beautiful campsite we've had at a deer camp, we have the traditional horizontal buck pole reaching towards the sky with nothing hanging from it. But here are the lowly bucks. <laughs> we should be hanging by our necks from this thing. <laughs> Tim Farragan, what's your report on opening day 97? What'd you see? Oh, black squirrel, black squirrel, chipmunk, and a red, a red squirrel, yeah. I see, so you got the grand slam of squirrels. Grand slam of squirrels. No deer? No deer. No deer. Tim? Or yeah. Richard? I saw some deer, but I didn't see any bucks. No bucks. No bucks. Just does, running the other way. Matty Radzalowski. I saw a sow. You saw a sow? <laughs> <laughs> I saw Matt. <laughs> that was about it. Oh, didn't you see something this morning? Uh, a doe and two fawns. Yearlings, so. Okay. And no bucks, no does, but a lot of stories I heard. I see. Very good. Well, we Next did. Year. We, we did have a darn good time with the tent camp, I thought. Good food, good company, pretty good weather, good background for the river, and one gorgeous buck pole. A tribute. <laughs> here, here. Three cheers for the buck pole. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! <laughs> we'll see you back here for a more comprehensive report next week. Now this is, uh, can you twist that around? We can see the, there it is. Is that a 10 point? Yeah, 10. Wow. That was uh, 200 pounds. When'd you get it? Uh, this morning in Milan. 
Okay. Just the after daybreak. What was he doing? Just walking between, uh, coming from a ditch and heading into some big woods, and I just happened to catch him on the way across. Huh. My See? first buck. Your first buck? Yeah. Holy cow, that must have been exciting. I'm up from Florida. I'm on vacation. I come up every year from Florida. My fourth year deer hunting. So you haven't gotten a buck before? No, this is it. I've been wanting, I've been wanting some antlers, and I think these will do. <laughs> I guess so. Take a look wow. at that. Well, Mr. That's Kelly, huge. you just may be on Big Buck now. I'm proud of this one.